and time and time again. Get on the phone with your upline ambassador and say, hey, I got somebody at 8,000, 9,000, 10,000. I think we need to run a rally call. Can you show me how to do this? They will run a rally call for your team. They will absolutely do it for you. And that volume will go pop. The rally call is very effective. Get to know it, get to love it, get to use it. So let's jump into contests. How many people here want to learn a few key moves that I've managed to figure out and create some funny names for them? And it's just a great way to be able to have a lot of fun in the month and drive some sick volume. Sick volume, anybody in the room? Okay. Contests, a lot of fun. A lot of fun when you get into it. At first, they suck. There's no fun. I did not enjoy making my first 100 calls on the 20th. And then I pat literally passed out with the phone in my hand. And then woke up the next day at 9 a.m., made another 100 calls, hated it. But then when I watched my volume go from 1 million to 15.3 million in 12 months, I said, this is a lot of fun. How many people are up for that kind of fun? All right, so the 19th, auto ships go through. You know where everybody in your team is at. Right? Volume's gone through, auto ships have run, you do your problem reports, you pick up some loose volume here and there. The 20th, you start running your contest. What day, guys? What day do you run your contest? 20th, 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 20th. 20th is the magic day. I do not care if I am on vacation, I was in Sydney, Australia, I was in, it didn't matter where I was, Costa Rica, the 20th, I wake up and I start running contests. If you stage the 20th, if you do it properly, and you build that into your what? Into your what? Into your culture, then you will have such a well-run team, and they will drive so much volume, it will make your head spin at the end of every month. It's just ridiculous. It truly is. We've watched people go from 60,000 to 100,000. We've watched people go from 70,000 to 170,000 through running simple contests. Simple rules, simple contests. So I'm going to show you guys a couple of very easy moves. Contests are kind of like solving a Rubik's Cube. Is there any uh, savants here in the room that can solve a Rubik's Cube in under two minutes? If, no, you can't take the stickers off. You got one? Yeah. So there's people that can do this. But they're very few and far between. Out of a thousand people, there's one guy here that can do it. So it's all about knowing the moves. You can get a book on it. You can study it. And then you just master those moves. If you want to move this color over to this side without moving this piece, but moving this piece over to here, there's a combination that you just memorize and you just go, and all your friends go, what the heck was that? And then you do it a bunch more times, and in two minutes, you've solved the Rubik's Cube. Running contests is kind of the same thing. So I'm going to teach you a couple moves that you can learn, you can have fun with, eventually you can master them, and you can learn to crush unlimited amount of volume by the end of the month. Just work on these moves. Start them on what day? Start them on what day? 20th. Pick up the phone on the 20th. Start them on that day. So the first move that we're going to learn is called Rising Star Program. So we're going to focus a lot on this one this month because this is everybody's chance to hit rising star again. So this move is going to be one that you're going to start on the 20th with everybody that you can, and you're going to run this program the hardest. So it's basically called three for one. Now, can you run a contest if you don't have a waiting room? You can. You can use somebody else's, but I don't recommend it. I do recommend it, actually, let me start over. I do recommend it, however, more than that, I recommend that you have a waiting room. If you have a waiting room, you can run the contest however you want, wherever you want, and you can run a lot more of them. If you're using somebody else's waiting room, you're limited to their what? Their team, right? If, if it's your waiting room, you've got your team to play with. Is your team bigger than their team? Chances are. So you got more people, meaning you got more contests, meaning that you drive more volume. So always have a waiting room. 
You will never catch me. You will never catch me without a waiting room. Always have a waiting room. Always, 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 always have a waiting room. And if I'm running a contest to get rid of that waiting room, you better guarantee that I got somebody else coming in right away so that I can get contests going again with my waiting room. So the first program, um, get three, uh, go and get three, and we will give you one. So let's assume a typical example. You recruit this rock star. big important people in the Nick's house and we're doing this meeting and Nick's up at the front of the room doing this big presentation talking you know how the company got started and all of a sudden I go walk out the back room into the front foyer area of Nick's house and I, I open the door up and there is probably six or seven cases this high of rock star energy See that picture there? And I was like, what is going on here? What is all this stuff? I was like, is this really rock star? And I sneak in, I'm like, damn. Nick's like, he's in the middle of a presentation. I'm like, <laughs> he's like, excuse me for one second. Because I was scared somebody was going to get up and go outside and see all the rock star energy. So I'm like, hey, get over here. What's this? He's like, oh my God. He's like, what is. I was like, dude, if you, you know, it's okay if you, you know, if you have the, maybe if you have the odd rock star, but yeah, do you need nine cases of it, and does it have to show up right now? <laughs> He's like, that son of a, the CEO of Rockstar lives next door to Nick, and thought that it'd be funny to go drop off 15 cases of Rockstar on Nick's doorstep, and he just happened to do it when I had all these guys coming in talking about our healthy energy and our shakes and all that stuff. So I keep this picture of Nick for blackmail purposes. So here's how the three for one. So you bring in this new superstar. You don't know what he's going to do. You know he's jacked up. He's cranking. He's on something. Maybe he's had 15 rock stars before he shows up to the presentation. You don't know. But welcome to the team, Nick. It's time for you to go rising what? Rising star. So here's how the three for Three, uh, three for one rising star contest works. Essentially, you tell Nick, get in. What day is it at this point in time? What day is it? 20th. So maybe Nick's been in for a week. Maybe he's been in for three weeks. I don't know. Maybe you ran a challenge party and nobody shows up. I have no idea. It really does not matter. However, all I do know is that he hasn't brought anybody yet, and it's the 20th. So I get on the phone with Nick, and because I have... Maybe even just one person in my what? Waiting room. I am now able to go to Nick and say, hey, Nick, go and find three people, and I will give you one person on your team. This is somebody that you're going to put it, you know, in your team. We're going to put them in your organization, and you are going to earn money through this individual for the rest of their existence in the business. Now, I don't know if you'll make a million dollars off them. I don't know if you'll make 10,000 off them. You might not even make anything off them. However, what I do know is there's a good chance that you will make something. So you're gonna want this person on your team. Let's go and find your three people. Nick, because he has just been cranking the rock stars all day, gets on the phone in the first five minutes, calls up three of his buddies, and goes out and recruits Kevin, Tannis, and Rachel just like that. That happens all the time, right? Every day, all the time. Typical scenario. Hey, Nick, you got to write, you got you to gotta, you gotta enroll three. Okay, one, two, three, done, right? Every time. This is a hypothetical example. You know, maybe it takes him a couple days. Usually it'll take him a challenge party. Usually you'll get it started, you'll force him to do a challenge party in four days, he'll get it done then. Point is, he goes out and gets three people. Now, here is the really cool idea, and uh, John Lawn, I'm going to ask you for a whiteboard, I hope. Hopefully we got a whiteboard back there. Um, so hopefully we can get a whiteboard up here and we can draw out a couple little scenarios. But the idea here is that they hit three for one. Oh, we actually got one. I love John Lawn. Give John Lawn a round of applause. Man. Oh, he's got everything ready. He's like, snap. Okay, so he'll hit, you know, the three for one. 
So at that point in time, you know, he goes and gets his three. So now you owe him how many distributors on his team? One. So you got a couple options at that point in time. You can just put it on Nick's front line, and then Nick will have how many people on his front line? Four. What's a better idea? Yes, you guys are starting to get this. You run another contest. You do not just put that person on his front line. Instead, you get on the phone with who? Kevin, Tannis, and Rachel. That was the right answer, whoever said Nick. You do get on the phone with Nick, and then you call Kevin, Tannis, and Rachel, and you say, hey, guys, welcome to the team. Want to put you in a little bit of an incentive program here. What's the program? Go and get hit rising, and we're going to take one person and put it on your... Pretty cool, eh? So now you went and got three people. Let's say you only do this twice per person in your group within 10 days. Is it possible for someone to go rising star in five days? Yeah. Absolutely. So let's say you only do this twice. So you got Nick who just got started. Hey, Nick, go and get three. We're going to run a challenge party on the 24. You do that. Nick gets us three. You get on the phone with Kevin, Tannis, and Rachel. Hey, guys, welcome to the team. We're going to put somebody on your team. You're going to make money to this person for the rest of your life for the duration of their they're in the business, all you have to do is go and hit rising what? Star. So here's where we're going to book your challenge party. So that's exactly what we do. We go out there and we get this done. Rachel says, oh, my God, I want this person on my team. So Rachel goes out, does her challenge party, brings in Aaron, Frank, and Matt into the business. So now look at this team. We've already got two rising stars. We got 1,000, 2,000. 3,000, this is 4,000 in volume from one person, from one waiting room, from two contests. Do you think we can drive volume doing this dozens and dozens and dozens of time in your team? It just comes down to making the phone calls. So now let's go to the next example that sometimes happens, not very often. Let's take the scenario where we get on the phone with Aaron, Frank, and Matt, and say, hey, go hit Rising Star. You can make a little bit of money if you do. And what happens? They don't do anything, right? And then you get mad and start pulling your hair. Why don't you get it? Do something. Do something. They don't do anything. So let's say you run that challenge from the 20th to the 25th, get three, get one, and nobody goes and gets their three. At the 25th, what do we do? We start another contest. So write this down. Run your first contest on the 20th. Run your second contest on the 25th. And this is not in stone. It doesn't have to be the 25th. If your upline ambassador says, hey, run it for four days, then you can run it for four days. It's not in stone. This is just what I do. This is my experience. My what, guys? Experience. My experience. I like to run it on the 25th. Then I'll run another one from the 25th to the 29th, and then I'll run some last-minute contests, 29th, 30th. So nobody does anything. So we run a new contest. Is the new contest going to be, hey, you didn't go and get three this time, so now I'm going to give you less days, and I want you to go and get three. Do you think we'll do it? No. So we run the next Rubik's Cube move. Move. Is that, is that a word? Move? How would you even spell that? M-U-E. So we run the next Rubik's Cube move, which is get how many? Get two. Get two, get one. So, we have a waiting room, yes? And we pretty much know at this point in time, because Nick won the contest, we owe Nick how many? Because Rachel won the contest, we owe Rachel how many? Can that be the same person? Yes, absolutely. So we know that Joe, in our waiting room, is going to be going in Rachel's team. Rachel has people in her group 
that we could put on Joe's team if Joe was in that group, right? So we tell Joe, hey, Joe, you're part of this contest as well. Go get two. We'll give you one. So we get on the phone with Aaron. We get on the phone with Frank. We get on the phone with Matt. And we get on the phone with Joe. And we tell them all, go and get and we'll give you one. Right? Are they all going to do it? And if they do all do it, then you got bigger problems than trying to figure out where you're going to find that one. Because now you got four rock stars. Because the uh, chance of that happening is slim to know. So you're probably going to find one. You might even find two that actually go out there and get it done. So let's take a look at this scenario. Joe goes and gets his two. Aaron goes and gets his one. For some reason, he brings in Terry's mom. I don't know who Terry is, but... So Aaron brings in Terry's mom. Joe brings in Aaron's mom. Now you got to figure out politics. Then you got to be a family counselor. Well, I don't know why Aaron doesn't get along with his mom, but, you know, Joe and Stan's team. How did that make you feel? So now you've got the scenario where Joe went and won the contest. So you've got to give Joe one. Right? You guys follow with me? You've got to give Joe one. And you've got to give Rachel one, but you're going to give Joe to Rachel. Right? So here's what we do. Very simple. How many people follow this? We're going to move Joe into Rachel's team to satisfy the fact that Rachel got one. You guys, sh show of hands if you don't follow it. Make some noise if you do follow it. <laughs> All right. So we move Joe down into Rachel's front line. Now, we owe Joe one as well, don't we? We don't have anyone left in our waiting room. Uh-oh. Where can we get that one to put into Joe's team? <laughs> Woo, we're starting to get this. Guys, if we can just get this and do this, this is all I do. I recruit, I enroll, I force calendars for people to do the challenge parties, I run contests. Recruit, force calendars, run contests. Recruit, force calendars, run what? Say it with me. Recruit, 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 recruit. That's it. Recruit, 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 recruit. And then force calendars, force calendars. Run contests, run contests, run what? That's it. Recruit, force calendars, run contests. Jay, what do you do? I recruit, force calendars, and run contests. That sounds weird. Yeah, but it makes me money a little bit, and it makes a whole lot of other people a whole lot of money. If you can get good at doing that, you can make everybody in your team wealthy. That's all you got to do. Because when you do it, guys, they're going to do it, right? And this is masterful. So now we move Matt. Let's say we move Matt. Oh, there's Matt. So Matt was on Rachel's front line. And uh, Joe, Joe passed away. How many people here are doing this business for generations to come in their family? And how many people realize that you can will this business over to your family members? Joe, we love him. He passed away. And in his will, he gave it to his son, Dale. <laughs> Dale doesn't know what's going on. He's getting these $29.95 checks every week. He's like, thanks, Dad. Let's turn these into $29,000 paychecks. So we move Dale down to, down to Rachel's front line, and then we move Matt underneath Dale from Rachel's front line. And that satisfies everybody. Everybody wins. So this is what the end result looks like. So we see Matt was there, and Matt got moved down underneath Dale. Does that make sense to everybody? 
Pretty simple. But you guys see now how you can take your waiting room, create a whole bunch of contests. So uh, let's see here. Show of hands if at the end of the month you run more than five contests at the end of the month. All right. 15 people. Now, I understand that sometimes we don't run contests because we don't know what to do, right? That's what I did. I didn't know what to do, so I didn't do anything. Once I learned a few ideas, I started running more contests. How many people here believe that they can run more contests just based on seeing this here today? Show of hands. Okay, now here's the, here's the, here's the money question. Let's say Nick's team looks like this. Let's say next month, let's fast forward to next month. Before we do that, I want you guys to throw in a couple numbers. How many contests do you think that I run on average every month this year at the end of the month on the 20th to the end of the month? On average, how many contests do you think that I run personally? Not, not Lauren and Tannis, who are five stars, who run this number as well. Not you know Rachel, who runs this many contests, or Dale and Robin. How many contests do you think I personally run in the groups? It, it, I, it could just be a small group, you know, national director, presidential director, or running an ambassador. How many contests do you think I personally set up and run at the end of every month? 10? 40? The, num the number is closer to 200. Anywhere in between 100 on a massive run to maybe 250, 200 plus. Now, how the heck does he do that? Liar. He's lying. I'm not. I'm not lying. Here's how quickly this adds up. I want you to take this simple example. We've got just a handful of people here. This is like 6,000 in volume. One, two, three, four, five, 6,500 in volume if they did all this in one month. Let's say next month you have one person in your waiting room. On the 20th, you're going to run hit rising and get, right? Let's take a look at this example. How many people could we put into that contest? Hey, Mitch, welcome to the team. Saw that you just got started. Hey, we got this great idea going for you. The first one of you to hit, uh, I got you and a couple people in a contest. First one of you to hit rising star, I'm going to put somebody on your team. You're going to make money off them, yada, yada, yada. You get the idea. How many contests is that? Hey, Sarah, welcome to the team. How many contests is that? Hey, Matt. Hey, Frank. Hey, Aaron's mom, who was Perry's mom, who gave it to her friend. She ran off with Joe. How many are we up to now? Six? What about Karen? Oh, seven. What about Kevin? Uh, Tannis hasn't recruited anybody? Nine? That's nine contests right there. You have nine people running for the opportunity of a lifetime because this person in your waiting room could be their lottery ticket that they never knew they had coming. Right? Simple, simple, simple example. That's it. So we run that whole shuffle. That, this move is called the shuffle. So we shuffle your waiting room underneath Rachel, shuffle her person down underneath that. That's it. That's the basis of the shuffle. So we recap. This is what the whole thing looks like. Rachel has three people front line. Dale has three people front line. And that's the simplest way to be able to line it up. So in that example, Rachel got three promoters. How many did Rachel's contest start with? Hey, Rachel, if you get three, we'll give you... Well, she got three. That's not fair. We could have increased the contest a little bit, couldn't we? So the answer is, could we have gotten more? So the next move is called the dance. And the dance is something that you've just got to do. It doesn't matter who's looking. It doesn't matter who's around. You've got to be brave. Can we get that music up a little bit? 
We've just got to get up there and start dancing. It doesn't matter what your waiting room looks like, guys. All you need is a waiting room. And you've got to just make some moves. Right? Who wants to dance with me for 30 seconds? Come on now, get that music up, John. Guys, this is why we need to have a waiting room so we can dance. All right, have a seat, guys. Dancing is fun. Dancing is fun. Dancing is fun, and that truly is what month end is all about. This last little move I want to show you is called the dance, and the dance is the biggest secret that I can share with you here today. Does anybody want to learn? My biggest secret, a month end contest. I don't believe you. All right. I might have to draw it. All right. So if you master those moves, you're absolutely golden. This little move I'm going to show you real quick will allow you to master and allow you to run as much volume as you possibly want. It's called the dance because sometimes you just go and go and go. It doesn't matter what your waiting room is. Sometimes you just got to make some moves. Doesn't matter what it is, sometimes you just got to make some moves. Is everyone willing to break through the fear of actually just running contests and just actually get out there and run them? Let me hear you. Yeah. Guys, the only way you can break through learning this, one of my original mentors shared with me the fact that only through surviving the attempt will you gain the experience. And I took that and applied it to my life. And I developed the philosophy that I don't care if I screw up, I'm just going to survive the attempt. And through doing that, I will learn, I will learn, and I will constantly get better. Are you guys willing to make moves and just get better? Okay, so run those moves at the end of the month, get some contests going, and start getting good at it. Now, this little contest here, if we can get the camera, maybe to zoom in on this, because I know I'm not good at drawing circles. And I know that you guys at the back of the room aren't going to be able to see this unless we can get the camera in, right in, a little bit closer if we can. Okay, so here is the dance. We're going to take the two for one Rubik's Cube move, and this is how it works. So you bring in, can you guys see that at the back? Darn. Pretty. Can we shut the lights off at the front, maybe? Ah, someone's thinking. If we can kill the lights at the front, we can uh, probably see this perfectly. Oh, all right, perfect. Look at that. Okay, so here's how it works. You have up over here, just set that down. Over here, you have your waiting room. Red is the hardest color to see. I know that. Okay, this is the waiting room up here. And you run a contest down in this group, and the contest is go get two, and we'll give you what? We'll give you one. Nick goes out and gets his two. All right? One, two. Now, a lot of you right now, and a lot of your regional directors who are trying to run contests right now, and even some ambassadors might be doing this. This is what I did. I would run the contest, and then I would just put this person right here. Hey, congratulations, you won. Here's your one. Here's your three. Now, has anyone run that before? I'm going to show you a play uh, that is called The Dance. The dance is basically this. Hey, Nick, congratulations. You went and got your two. Now, I can give you your one or... We've got four days left in the month. We can double your group by the end of the month if you choose. What would you like to do? What do you guys think? Option one or option two? Option one or option two? Option two. They will always go for option two. Option two is this. Okay, Nick, we're going to do this. So what we're going to do is we're going to offer this waiting room, Steve, to your number one and number two. 
So you go to one, you go to two, and you say, hey, I'll get to give you one. Get to give you one. You go up to Nick as well and say, Nick, listen, if we're going to double this group, we're going to run these contests, I need you to go and get a third. Go and get a what? I say, Nick, we're going to run this contest. Can I count on you? Can I what? Say those words. Can I count on you to go and get a third? And he will say yes. And guys, he will go and get it done. He'll just get it done. They always do. They've given you their word. They can count on you to go and get it done. So, Nick will go and find his third every single time. I've never not seen them go and get it because they don't get a paycheck if they don't get it. Hey, Nick, just an FYI, you got two days left to go get your third. I don't know if I told you or not, but uh, you're not getting paid unless you go get that third. You might want to tell him at the beginning, but after he said he can count, you can count on him. Not before. So he goes and gets his third. So already from this move, you've added how much? 500. So now you give the same opportunity of a lifetime to one and two. You had already lined that up, right? So their job is to go and get two, and you'll give them one. Number three just came into play, and there's two days left. Hello, number three. Welcome to the... Let me offer you an opportunity of a... You see, you just got in here, and, and you know, I, this might be too fast for you, but I just want to throw it out there. If you go and find two people, I'm going to give you a third. You'll literally make a few hundred bucks. You'll get started at the first level of the complex, your first two days in the business. Some of these people get fired up, and they will go and get there, too. You tell your waiting room, Steve or Dale. Joe and Dale, Joe and Dale up here, you tell them the same thing. So from this one get two, how many contests do we now have going in this team alone? Four. Get two, get one. Get two, get one. Get two, get one. Get two, get one. Right? Four contests already. So here's what happens. One of these people will do it. Let's say this person goes and gets... One, let's say this guy that came in was just completely fired up, excited, and went and got his what? Can you guys still see this? No. This person went and got his two. So now how much volume have we added? 500, 500, 500, 500. 2,000 already. So now you can put this person down here. It satisfies his one, and it satisfies her one, right? Wrong. Or we just keep dancing. Hey, number three, I can give you that or we can double your, double your volume, double your team, right? So we run the same contest with number three. Can I count on you to go and get your, so he goes out and gets his one, and maybe this person only brings in one. Maybe this person only brings in a transformation kit. Maybe this person actually does bring in two. <laughs> You just keep going and 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 going. How much volume could you drive doing this? It's infinite. Now it comes down to how good can you get at selling value to this person to go and get there too. Can you guys grab that? Can you get excited about that? Because that's it. That's it. That's the move. So make that move and you're absolutely rocking. Lights up, guys. We'll come back to it. This is all you need to know. That one little move. Do those other three moves. 
and uh, dance and dance and dance and dance to your heart's content. Now, when you, when you dance and you dance aggressively, some people get tired. <laughs> they get tired. So you've got to recognize when people you push and people start to get tired.